my channel. As you can see, we are on a rooftop and and now there's a helicopter. Yes, we're on a rooftop because I decided I needed to film like three or four more videos before I left Sydney because I've been told that once I get to the Outback, which is my next stop, my internet connection isn't really going to be good enough for streaming videos or downloading. So I'm guessing it won't be very good for uploading either. And I'm guessing that wind is going to be playing havoc with the microphone. That's better. So really this was the only choice because my housemates never seem to go out. It's like they're in Sydney and they just never go anywhere. So before I go to the beach, I'm going to the beach by the way. So like this that you can see glowing through my white top is not my bra, it is my bikini. I'm going to Tamarama Beach, which is like a little one near Bondi. So anyway, let's get on with this because the wind keeps changing direction. As you know, I am determined in 2015 to be a more well-rounded, better read individual. And actually I just set my Goodreads channel channel channel? my Goodreads challenge, which is 100 books. I only read 50 last year and I wanted to read 60, but I was traveling a lot, as you know. So this year, 100 books, I figure three months in the outback where it's too hot to work like during the daytime, we're gonna have to work in the mornings and the evenings. That leaves like a whole afternoon for me to read and write. So with the aim of improving myself, it's very self-improvement year. Oh, the wind is getting up. Maybe I should just take the tripod to the beach. Mind you, putting a tripod on sand isn't really a good idea, is it? Anyway, the book I was trying to tell you about is Perfume, The Story of a Murderer by Peter Suskind. As I understand it, this is about someone who's born in the gutter, surrounded by like fish guts, and just disgusting foul smellingness. And as he ages, it becomes apparent that he has no inherent smell of his own. He has no scent, and that leads the surrounding people to mistrust him. Interesting. I wonder if that's sort of something to do with pheromones. It makes me think of that whale that they've recorded who's swimming around the ocean putting out a call for companions and no whales are answering it because there must be something wrong with his, his sound making box, I don't know. And the call is unique, like no whales would recognise it as their call because he's he or she is the only one making it. So anyway, tangent. As this person ages, he does also discover, he or she, he discovers that he has an amazing sense of smell and he sets out to kind of, I think, create a smell that will endear him to other people, as I understand it. I don't know exactly, but I opened it up to this one page that was just so horrific and yet hedonistic that I have to read it. I think the writing of this looks like it's going to be really, really something. That is Perfume, and that is actually on the BBC's Big Read list. I did a I did a video and a blog post about Project Big Read. I'll link that below, and that is one of the books on there. So that you know, starting to cross off that list finally. The next book I have, there's a guy at work called Rob who is the most well-read person I have ever met, and I know lots of well-read people, and he would not stop talking about The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I don't really know what it's about. I got it based on his recommendation and the fact that we kept selling out of this edition. Uh, it says, When Richard Papen joins an elite group of clever misfits at his New England college, it seems he can finally become the person he wants to be. But the moral boundaries he will, he will cross with his new friends and the deaths they are responsible for will change all of the dot dot dot, I don't know the rest, because there's a sticker, but I'm sure it'd be good. Next. Finally, 1984 by George Orwell. I will read this book. I'd actually really like to reread Animal Farm, but the edition I want of that is quite expensive for such a thin book. Anyway, I got this one and I originally really wanted to buy almost exactly the same cover, but it had a redacted title and author. Like I was gonna spend four or five extra dollars just because I wanted that to be redacted and it seemed to fit with what I know of the plot. So I might actually redact it myself, just get a black marker pen or something. Anyway, I'm not going to explain this, you know that it's very, it was very ahead of its time, it kind of referenced a lot of things 
in the future, what was the future for George Orwell, but which has actually come to pass for us. It's about kind of like the, the watchful eye of Big Brother, and you all know, you all, you've probably read it, and I'm just the last one in the world to read it. So that goes there. Next, The Bell Jar by uh, Sylvia Plath. I, I, I knew that, I don't know why I looked it up, I did know that. And this one, again, I don't actually know what it's about, but I know that it's supposed to be amazing, and I know that I like this cover. Uh, when Esther Greenwood wins an internship on a New York fashion magazine in 1953, she is elated, believing she will finally realise her dreams to become a writer. But in between the cocktail parties and piles of manuscripts, Esther's life begins to slide out of control. Dun dun dun. And then there's stuff about depression, I think, which references Sylvia Plath's own life, own very short life. And this is the 50th anniversary edition, and it's not very thick, and think this is on the BBC's big read list but it's it's pretty huge like very popular so I'm gonna read that then for some non-fiction I have Sweet Nothing by Nicole Mowbray I am I have a sweet tooth I really like sweet things a lot but um, I want to try weaning myself off because I kind of have a problem in the mornings. I sleep very well. I don't necessarily go to bed early enough, but even so, I sleep beyond the point that I should need to, considering I'm no longer a teenager. So I'm wondering if that's to do with sugar. Anyway, it seems like a good thing to give up, considering they keep saying it's basically poison for us. So I'm going to read Sweet Nothing, Why I Gave Up Sugar and How You Can Too. I just figure more awareness would be good, more factual information would be good, and it might change my mind the next time I reach for a sweet treat. I don't know, I just, I don't know. I don't eat that much chocolate or that many crisps, but I love sweets. So, like Sour Patch Kids, which I can actually get in this country. My bag's about to blow away. I have eaten too many since I came to Australia. Anyway, another thing I'm aiming to do while I'm in the Outback is finish a magazine. Sorry, I hate watching videos where there's that wind sound and now you're getting loads of it, so I doubt I'm going to upload this video. The last two books I have, because I'm hoping to finish a manuscript in the three months that I'm in the Outback, is Stephen King's On Writing. This is a memoir of the craft. This is his writing experience and, you know, I'm not actually a particular fan of Stephen King. Although, then again, I haven't really read much of his work. I'm not really a horror reader, but he is prolific and that that says something. I want to I want to know how he does it. So, I'm going to read this one here, and then when I was looking at good read good books to read on writing, I also found Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott, some instructions on writing and life. Like neither of these are new. Actually, when it comes to submitting your work and finding agents and publishers, it might not be the most up-to-date stuff I could read. In fact, it isn't. But apparently, in terms of just writing that luxuriates in writing, in the craft, this is one of the best. So, I got this one. I don't know who Anne Lamott actually is, but hopefully she's a writer or a publisher or an agent or someone who knows what they're talking about because that's what I need. And I figure just reading about writing will encourage me to write. That's the theory anyway. So those are my books. And I need to go and have lunch before I get to the beach. So thanks very much for watching guys. See you in the next video, which I ain't going to film up here. Put it that way. Bye.